As you can see by the title, man, the topic of today's video is the one, the only, Larry Legend, Larry Bird, man. I haven't did a Larry Bird video in so, 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 so long. And I know a lot of my subscribers are gonna be happy. And I just, like I said, I just been trying to gain that traction and get my, my channel back um, jumping and back popping again. And what way to do, what better way to do that than reacting to Larry Legend? So as you can see by the title, I got the best Larry Bird alpha male rookie story ever told. So just off the strength of this being a Larry Bird video, man, go ahead and hit that thumbs up button. And if you haven't already, man, go ahead and subscribe. And you know how I do over here. We ain't gonna do too much talking. Let's go and get into the video. Peace must carry all veterans' bags on road trips. But a rookie Larry Bird on his very first road trip with the Boston Celtics stood up in front of every veteran on the bus. Make sure you see it. Yeah. I want you guys to know I'm never going to get you any water and I'm never going to carry one bag ever. And he never did. And later that year, when he was confronted by an old Hall of Famer, Pete Maravich. I was going to say, see. It's like a rite of passage, like that rookie Hayes and stuff. But you got some guys who's the exception to that rule. You know what I mean? You got some guys that come in, like, with that Larry Bird mindset. Like, man, I know that this is what y'all do. Just know y'all can do that with whoever else y'all can do that with. But with me, that ain't fine. Larry Bird said something so disrespectful, it sent Pete into retirement. This is the story of how a rookie Larry Bird established himself as the alpha male and dominated the NBA from day one. I walk in the first day of camp, them guys were on the floor stretching, and here comes the white savior, here comes this, here comes that. I sort of enjoyed it, because I knew I was going to battle them all day. Cedric Maxwell, the Celtics leading scorer the year before Larry arrived, had a rude awakening. He was skeptical that the self-proclaimed pick from French Lick was all hype until that first day in training camp but it's so crazy because it's like i think that all people um a lot of people just look at larry bird like even like i'm talking about like the like the like the i'm pretty sure the past people that he actually went up against but then i know especially like the older younger generations that come behind him like us i know a lot of us looked at larry bird like he was overrated i'm just gonna be completely honest with you like i i never really understood like why so many people hold him in high regard until i started watching Larry Bird videos and doing my education on it. And I seen why he was held to such high regards. And it's always like kind of a what if factor had his back never, had he never messed up his back that led to, you know, taking away some years of his career, how, how great he really could have been. But just look at what he got accomplished in that time frame. Um, it's, it's impressive in his own. I'm thinking of it's low, he can't get off a shot. It's not that strong. This is going to be a layup. Bam, knocks down a jump shot. Okay. Maybe that was Gets the ball again. See, that was a style oh, back man. then, a little bit short. I be trying to bring that back, man. I'm thinking like, okay, hey, you know what? I'm going to D this guy up. I'm going to show him his life. 20 feet away. Bam. 25 feet away. Bam. <laughs> Out of my mind, just got something. Damn, this white guy can play. The Celtics were the second worst team in the league before Larry Bird arrived. Winning only 29 games. 29 games. It's hard to even believe that. Rookie, Larry Bird led that exact same Celtics team to a 61 and 21 record. That 32 game turnaround was the greatest single season turnaround in NBA history. And what's most impressive is he did it with no Robert Parrish, no Kevin McHale. No Dennis Johnson, Bill Walton, or anyone. It was all Larry Bird. But how did Larry get so confident and so arrogant? Because at every level, he proved the doubters wrong. In college, he took a mid-major Indiana State to 33. But here's the thing, too. Before facing what turned And this can be out to any younger athletes or even just anybody in life that's working towards something. If you're putting in the work for whatever it is that you're doing, your confidence comes from that. You know what I mean? So when you go into situations, you're prepared because you worked for this. Like you've done all the hard, the hard part been done behind closed doors. The easy part is going out there and performing. 
So that's where the confidence comes into play. Like, so when you look at people that be like, how is he confident with that type of team? He's confident because of his preparation and his approach to the game. That's where the confidence comes from. His greatest rival, Magic Johnson, in the NCAA title game. But here's how Magic recalls first meeting Larry the summer before that game. The summer before, they had the WIT tournament. Okay. And they brought all the best college players together okay. to play against the world. Okay. And man, I see this guy, you know, blonde. <laughs> oh, this is illegal black. Okay. Man, I'm sitting there watching him shoot shine. He must have made 30 in a row. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, they all was saying, and this was back, this was back then, when the three-point line had just been implemented. This dude could play. Okay. Then he got in the game. Jack Gibbons was player of the year that year. Right. He tore him up. And Larry Bird was taking it to him. <laughs> I said, oh, 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 man. I'm calling back home saying, oh, he for real. He for real. This right. dude Larry Bird? Right. Oh, he got it. He's right. playing. He's dominating Jack right. Gibbons. And they said, no way. I said, oh, yeah. He's dominating. I think our first game was in Kentucky. We got about a 10, 12 point lead. And they put us in. Went to 25, 30, just that fast. This is the only time Magic and Bird played together. Take us out. The league go back down. Put us back in. And Bird and Johnson. The show is starting to get. When you play with Magic, there's just something about it. You want to make that extra pass. You want to get that rebound and start to break. We came down a couple of times. I go behind my back, no look at him. He no look back to me. And I'm laying it up. I'm saying, oh, man. This guy got game. That just gave me goosebumps, bro. Magic knows <laughs> that he would meet Larry Bird again, but this time it would be in the national title game. Here we go, six, seven months later. Right. We're playing in the NCAA championship game. He's player of the year. Sports Illustrated, all the magazines got he on the cover. Right. And I said, wow. And they're 33 and 0. 33 and 0. Man, I said, oh. And they had been right since. That's right. <laughs> and they weren't right before. Yeah, that's right. 33 and 0. That I did not know. <laughs> that 1979 NCAA title matchup between Larry Bird and Magic Johnson is still the highest rated basketball game ever played. Unfortunately for Larry Bird, it was one of his worst because Michigan State double teamed him all night long. And since Larry was largely a one man show, Indiana State had no answer. That's almost that's almost like one of them that's like one of them situations where I always talk about you want to have more than one person being your team because if you only got one person that's your team, stuff like that happens. You double team the number one player, you take him out. Now you for the most part you eliminate their game plan. So That still hurts. When you win 33 in a row and you walk into the game, you know, you never know what to expect. But I expect to win. We didn't win. Larry Bird said this was his most painful loss ever. And when he got to the NBA, he took that pain out on the entire league. Not only did he play with a level of toughness that the NBA had never seen before, but Larry Bird's trash talking stories. That's what surprised me the most about Larry Bird, bro. Even was the trash Larry's talking. own teammates could face his wrath. 
Not many younger people know this, but Hall of Famer Pete Maravich, who holds nearly every major NCAA scoring record, including highest scoring average at 44.2 points per game, was actually teammates with Larry Bird in Larry's rookie year. However, Larry couldn't care less about Pete's NCAA accolades because when these two butted heads, Larry got so disrespectful. Well, my, my death story, I, I think, was probably Pete Maravich and Larry Bird. Uh, Pete Maravich is passed ball to Larry. Pete's man goes down and double teams Larry. Larry puts up a, a tough shot, and timeout's called, and um, we come to timeout, and, and Pete Maravich looks over, and Larry says, Larry, Larry, they're double teaming you, man. You can't force up those kind of shots. And Larry looks up and goes, if you were any damn good, they wouldn't be double teaming me. This is one Hall of Fame to another one. I was in shock. Ouch. Hey, that's what, hey, tired at the that's, that right there is like a, that, that right there is like a, a, a confidence killer, bro. Somebody tell you that. If you was any damn good, I would have to worry about being double teamed. But that's facts, though. I don't see no lies in that. Dirk Burr has some crazy passes too, bro. Like, I think that's something else that was kind of over. I don't know, man. I just think Burr here as a player was overlooked. I can't even just say a certain aspect of his game. I think he, him, period, was just overlooked. To rebound it, Like these passes I'm seeing Bird do, these are the type of passes I be seeing from Jokic. In overtime of the All-Star game that year, Larry Bird took over on national TV by draining two corner shots back to back to take the lead. He ignited his reputation as one of the most clutch players in NBA history. That's disrespectful to give Bird that much space, so that gotta happen right there. You give him that much space, that gotta happen. After that, he pulled off the play of the game and one of the greatest passes in his career. Ended up being the greatest individual rivalry in sports history. We ended up. In the I gotta dive more. I gotta dive deeper into that Magic and Bird rivalry. Right. Celtics and the Lakers, and then his personality with Boston. My personality was was Hollywood. Right. Oh, no. I mean, they couldn't script this any better. No. He was rookie of the year. I think you got like one or two votes. That's all. That's all you got. I, like, I think it was like 32, 33. No, to like one or two. No, even less, more than that. It was 60 something to like two. I was mad. You like, hold on. It came the first rookie in NBA history to be named Finals MVP. Yeah. I was only the third dude ever in NBA history to go from the college championship yeah. to the NBA finals championship. Right. And, I, <laughs> <laughs> and they were two LA dudes. <laughs> you know, I'm like, okay, he's not that much better than me. Right. Not 63 to 2. Right. But okay, I took it. Man, that's a unanimous move, bro. That we came in together. 63 to 2. Yeah. Oh. Right. And say, hey, okay. He's great. I can't let him get too far ahead of me. I gotta work hard because I wanna stay in Now put some respect on Larry Bird's name. <laughs> As you can see, that is it for this video, man. Um I, I decided that I wanted to bless my 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 subscribers who was rocking with me two a year ago, two years ago. 
Um, when I when I really started building momentum with this channel, and a lot of it came from Larry Bird. So you know, I've been wanting to um, kind of give back that my appreciation for everybody who was rocking with me. So even you new even um, new subscribers, if y'all are Bird fans or just sports fans, period. You know, this is the channel to be. You know, because I'm having videos like this coming, um, Larry Bird videos, Michael Jordan, Magic Johnson. Then I'm just not doing just basketball. I'm going to football. And then I want to get into things other than that eventually. Like my goal is what I want to be is kind of like a sports analyst, like what you see Stephen A, Skip Bayless and them do because I love sports. Sports is my passion, so I want to be associated with that. But as you can see, man, that is it for this video. If you did enjoy this video, do me a big, big, big favor, man. Smash that thumbs up button. Also, if you're new to the channel, man, make sure you subscribe. When you subscribe, click that post notification bell where you'll be notified on all things Rob Sports Center. I was going to say my old YouTube name. Like I'll, but like I've been saying since I've been back on the tube, just like Jersey Drake, bro, them videos coming back to back. So stay tuned. I'll see y'all in the next video.